Hi my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. So today's makeup, as you can tell by the title, this is inspired by Natasha Dalal. And Natasha Dalal is right now the wife of Berlin Helen. So, you know, all the best and congratulations to her. However though, I really adored the makeup she actually wore. I wasn't too sure if it was a reception makeup, but I really wanted to do this makeup. So I saw how she kept it so simple, natural. So I wanted to actually start this makeup off with some really beautiful, skincare regime for my skincare today I'm going to start it up with some fresh rose deep hydration oil infused serum so this is a beautiful serum that gives you lots of hydration and it's one of my favorite I will definitely suggest this to all my brides now number the Sony who is the makeup artist of Natasha Dalal she actually I saw her using and applying airbrush makeup so I actually had to take out my airbrush now I'm not a big fan of airbrush makeup however just because she used it, I thought of using it because I'm really creating that look. So I wanted to have the similar effect on my face as well. And so I mixed two foundations. So the first foundation that I'm using is actually the MAC Studio Face and Body Foundation. And, and this is in the shade C4. I honestly I'm not a big fan of airbrush though because I feel like I just have to use the airbrush for just applying the foundation or like contour or brush, uh, blush but then when it comes to powder and all of that stuff I again have to go in with my brush or sometimes I feel like the airbrush uh, foundation doesn't sit properly and then I kind of have to go with my beauty blender again to make sure it sits properly I did encounter that problem in today's tutorial so I will be showing you that in a bit so you can say this is a quick review for my airbrush application as well the next foundation that I'm using which is very very liquidy it's the bare mineral bare skin foundation this is the shade bare honey it definitely has a little bit of that um, like a golden undertone to it so I wanted to use to uh, cover my under eyes and my eyelids so when I'm doing it like I, I'm not sure if you can see it properly but when I was actually um, close to my chin area and my eyelid when it comes to eyelid you're gonna notice what I mean by saying that you have to kind of go in with your beauty blender to sort of go and make sure it's all blended because sometimes airbrush is like a paint so it's just spraying paint over your face pretty much but it's not blended it's not you know how we say push the product into your face till it's blended it's not blended it just sits on top so you have to make sure that you go ahead with a beauty blender to ensure that everything is well blended and everything is well seeped into your skin and of course I like to make sure my neck is all covered as well So here I'm just going over my eyelid. Now it's covering pretty well. I do think that, again, airbrush is kind of slow. And when you're a bridal makeup artist, you do want to end up doing your bridal a little faster than usual. This is taking way too much time. And uh, I sometimes feel like, uh, I don't know, I, I, I'll, I'll pretty much show you what I mean when I say airbrush doesn't sit properly. I used to do airbrush before because it was so much in demand. Every other bride or client that I was doing was asking for airbrush. It's a great product to have in your kit as a makeup artist because it kind of gives you that demand. If you if your client wants it, you can totally provide that kind of service. Uh, personally though, I don't like using it. So this is what the coverage looks like right now. But um, I actually had to go in with a beauty blender because I wasn't... I want to make sure that everything is set into the skin and it wasn't like floating. If your foundation is floating on the skin and you didn't use something to dab it all into your skin, it is going to crack. Now that is one biggest downfall with airbrush that when it's fresh it looks amazing but when it's not fresh after a few hours, if it's not even set properly after literally an hour you're going to start to see cracks in your laugh line, underneath the eyes, wherever your skin is going to move, it's going to create that crack. So yeah, this is why I don't like using airbrush and I always tell that to my clients, um, that this from my personal opinion, I would say that, but if you insist, I'll bring it anyhow. 
All right, so now to set all of that, I'm using my Charlotte Tilbury's powder. This is pretty much like in a shade yellow, but uh, it is for fair and medium skin tone. This is their loose translucent powder. And you don't have to um, bake, you can just go ahead and, you know, sort of dust away the powder all over your face. Now for Shadow Shield, I use my Too Faced Shadow Shield, uh, Shadow Shield, which is like a eye primer for my eyeshadows to sort of sit onto. The first color from this eyeshadow palette that I'm using is the Enchanted Sigma palette. So I'm going to be using this color called Innocent, which is like a very um, salmon, pink, fleshy tone. It's going to blend into my eyelid nicely, creating a beautiful base for the remaining colors to sort of sit onto. If you notice how Natasha Delal's makeup was, it was very, very, very natural. It was almost like seamless. You couldn't see much other than a little bit of eyeliner, some shimmer here and there, and a beautiful peach, pink, baby pink sort of lipstick. It was very neutral. I know a lot of brides in 2021 like that kind of makeup because a lot of the brides are having intimate wedding, which is very small wedding, and they don't want to overboard themselves with a ton of makeup. The next color that I'm using, it's called Claystone, which is kind of like a brown shade. I'm trying to create like the outer winged liner look, so it looks more elongated and looks nice and more blended. When you're trying to create a natural look, you want to make sure that everything looks seamless and blended. Pers personally, I didn't like the way this base is looking on photograph or the eye makeup is looking on photographs because I'm more of a person who likes a little more glammed makeup and most of my brides do like that as well. Now the next shade that I'm using it's called Sunburst which is kind of like a shimmery vanilla shade, kind of like an ivory shimmery shade and I'm just applying it all over my lid and also a little bit on top of that um, brown eyeliner look that I just created. Once that's done, I'm going to now use this Benefit Brow 24 Hour Brow Gel with the Brow Wiz. So as always, I like to start with the inner corners and kind of work my way from the arch all the way to the outer corners, creating a little bit of that lift on my arch. One good thing that happened during COVID is I stopped going to the lady for my eyebrows and for some reason my eyebrows grew so nice and thick. All I'm doing is sitting at home and just cleaning like the sparse hair that grows here and there with a tweezer and that helps a lot. So yes, like I was saying, that this bridal base, it looks amazing in person, it looks amazing in videograph and everything, but when it photographs, I find like it looks too, too, too natural for me. So personally, I'm the kind of person who likes a little bit more drama. So I like to go with a little heavier base, but more blended heavier base. And now for highlighter, I'm using my Becca highlighter. This is in the shade Opal. It is one of the most amazing highlighters I've always used and I'm going to ever use because this highlighter is, it gives us such a fine, real life-like finish. It's really, really beautiful. And as time goes on, it blends into your skin almost like a natural glow. The next thing that I'm going to be using is this Highlight and Contour Palette by Kat Von D. I'm just going to take that powder highlight and dab it underneath my eyes just to make sure that the, the makeup lasts even longer and that both my under eyes are highlighted and brightened. Because I don't want the highlighters of today's makeup, like the shimmer highlighters of today's makeup to kind of pop, so I'm just going over with this. So that way everything looks more natural. Like I said, that highlighter, the more it stays, the better it gets with time. So when it's mixed with a little bit of powder, it looks more diffused instead of a whole lot of highlighter going on. And now I'm using those two darker colors to go over my contour areas. 
And this is all to create and to make sure that everything looks more seamless and blended. And very, very, very natural finish. Next, I'm going to be using this blush by Wet n Wild, and it is in the shade Pearl Pearlescent Pearlescent Pink. That's what it's called. It's a really beautiful natural shade, very very beautiful natural shade, and it also has its own shimmer because, like the the name suggests, it has like a pearl thing, meaning it more it has a little bit of that pearl shine. So it's very nice and taking a little bit of foundation on a clean brush I'm just making sure my eyes that wing that I've created earlier using a uh, eyeshadow looks more clean and crisp and the color that I just used right now it's actually a Mac color uh, shimmer color I will write the name down below I just don't have the color on me right now but it's gonna make my eyes pop like instantly as you can see applied it with my um, fingertips it just made my eyes pop like crazy so taking Inglot gel eyeliner this is in the shade brown I'm now going to create a soft eyeliner look very 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 thin eyeliner and it already looks a little blended because we have that prior brown eyeshadow laid underneath it that's why it looks really really nice and you know how I cleaned it with that um, foundation it's now helping me to know where exactly my line is going to be for my wing and that's how simple it gets Next, I'm going to be using this Demi Wiss piece. I believe it's there from Walmart. I'm not too sure what the brand is called. But I forgot to apply some mascara before I pop those lashes on. So here, I'm just using my Smashbox mascara. It's called Super Fan. Before I go in with my lashes. So I just got the MAC eyeshadow that I pressed on my eyelid earlier. It is called Light Touch Pressed Pigment by MAC Cosmetics and that's the shimmer name it's called. And once my eyelashes are all popped in, I'm going to go ahead with my lipstick. For today's lipstick, I have applied the Sore Lip Liner which is also by MAC Cosmetics and then I topped it up with Pillow Talk which is from Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, makeup cos uh, cosmetics and it gives off a very nice like a pink a baby pink peachy pink kind of look which looks very flattering on our skin tone so definitely this makeup is one of my favorite when it comes to talking about natural makeup and that's the reason why I wanted to do this makeup in front of natural light because then you'll get more of what it looks under a natural light, a natural makeup, right? If I, undo, if I did it under studio light, it will just look like any other makeup and you won't be seeing the real difference. It's very hard to sometimes look when studio lights are on versus uh, sunlight. Sunlight is the best light to be honest. But in Canada, it's very hard to get sunlight during uh, throughout the day because in winter time, the sun sets really fast. All right, so here I'm just creating a crown on my hair, and as you can see, I've left out my front bangs, and that is a car passing. <laughs> That's why all that uh, sunlight is reflecting on my face. I popped on some lashes, these la oh sorry, the contact lenses. The contact lenses are by TTDI contact lenses and it is in the shade Daisy Brown. Okay, taking some bobby pin, I'm just secure, making sure that bump is all secured. So now I'm gonna just release the front section <laughs> and it looks messy right now. 
I've already pre-curled my hair. I usually curl my hair a few hours after I take a shower, basically once it's all dry. And then here I'm just popping in my extension to make my hair length a little longer. Now this is a very rough work. I usually won't do it. But when you're trying to recreate a makeup look, it's important that we kind of try to do our hairstyle like that as well. Especially if you're trying to recreate it yourself at home, it's quite hard because doing your own hair, it's really hard. It's never perfect. Um, that's why when I go outside and stuff, I prefer someone else doing my hair because they can see the back and all that and they can do a very nice clean job versus me doing my own. So I'm just popping for more um, hair extensions and this is not to basically show off that I have a lot of hair but just to make sure that length is more appropriate. I like a little bit of length, no, no, it's like a little chest length. Once it's all done, it's really good to go. So that is it and I'm so happy the sun just came up, oh man. By the time I went and put on those jewelries and my top and some dupatta on, the sun was already going down. But I was very lucky enough to find a jewelry close to her kind of jewelry. So this had like a little bit, little bit of that emerald and pearls and American diamond in it. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. This was my take on Natasha Dalal's makeup recreation. Let me know if you guys want to see the Dia Mirza's one, which I kind of like because it's so like Bengali inspired and I'm not surprised because Dia Mirza has a little bit of that Bengali in her. So yeah, let me know if you guys want me to recreate that. So that will be very quite interesting because I can then show you my take on that makeup look. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. I'll see you on my next video. Till then, take care, stay safe and uh, yeah, lots of love and I'll see you on my next video. Bye-bye.